get to record V. So welcome, welcome. Thanks everyone for coming together this evening. And this is part of the Rise and Resiliency series in response to the moment that we are in with coronavirus. And I am uh, really honored to have such an incredible uh, network of practitioners, helpers, healers, Um, I'm currently in Northern Michigan at my home. Um, Orion, our guest for tonight, is out in California. I know many of you are in both of those places and elsewhere in, in the country and perhaps even the world. So um, yeah, really, really so grateful that we get to drop, drop in, uh, have a little bit of connection and learn some tools that can be helpful for uh, mental, emotional, spiritual wellness and connection at this time so that we can come out of this even more resilient ultimately. So I'd like to take a moment to lead us through a little bit of a grounding together. So wherever you are, if you're able to um, lower your eyes if you wish, or you can let your eyes rest open and just beginning to notice the flow of your breath in this moment, what it's like. And connecting your breath with your heart. So allowing yourself to bring your awareness towards your heart and breathe a little bit slower and a little bit deeper into the space of your heart. Just noticing what it's like in this moment in your physical body, in your physical heart, any sensations that may be present, any emotions that may be present, just being with whatever is here in a non-judgmental way. And allowing yourself from this place to take a moment to think of something in your life, something that you feel grateful for. So even with everything that's happening in the world right now, what is one thing that you can feel appreciation for in this moment? And inviting yourself to actually feel the feeling of appreciation or the feeling of gratitude in your physical body. What would it be like to activate that feeling right now if it's available to you? And from this place, seeing if there's a little bit of movement that would feel nourishing to your body. So letting yourself stretch or twist, maybe even wiggle or shake. What does your body need right now? Maybe your body wants to just be still. And then only when you feel ready, not a moment sooner, allowing your eyes to open once again.
So it is my great honor to introduce for this evening, Orion. We have um, been closely connected. I was actually living uh, at the same space as Orion uh, last year for a while. And um, so we got to know each other in that way as sort of housemates. And we've also worked um, together to co-create events and experiences for people. If, uh, if it weren't for coronavirus, I was gonna be coming back out that way uh, uh, tomorrow, actually. And um, <laughs> with possibility for maybe hosting some VIP retreats together, maybe some live events with groups of people. <laughs> and so um, it's, uh, it's an interesting moment to have all of that kind of shaken up right now. And um, uh, all of that to say that he is very gifted in many, many modalities, great um, skill sets and uh, presence and care. And um, I really have learned so much from him and continue to. <laughs> and um, I'm excited that all of you get to this evening as well. Um, and so without further ado, I invite you to uh, take it from here, Orion. Thank you. Thank you, my dear. I love you so much. So grateful for you and putting this together. Uh, so grateful for everyone that's joined, some good friends, some new faces, some uh, acquaintances I hope to become better friends with. Um, welcome, everyone. So um, for those of you that know me, I have, if the glasses didn't give it away, I do have a very geeky side. So um, for the first portion of this, I'm going to share some slides um, and go through a slide deck. And I think I, I love slides because they, I feel that they also, they offer a visual component for anyone that's more of a visual learner. And I get to inject a little humor into them too. I love little geeky animations. So my intention is to, um, you know, when I was sitting with the topic for this, um, as Aria was putting together this series, um, I was just thinking back on how many times in my life I've suddenly been uh, plummeted into stillness. Um, through uh, big life changes, big over life overhauls, complete shifts in my life all at once. And realizing like most of the time it's because I wasn't listening. <laughs> and, like I wasn't paying attention to where I was needed, what I was to do, and that the universe or God or spirit or um, nature or, or the quantum mechanics of the, the universe, whichever you like, um, corrected for me. And you know, uh, I've developed quite a comfort with it happening several times now uh, through my stubbornness and not listening and then learning needing to learn the hard way to how do I find the lesson in all of this. And now suddenly the collective is plummeted into this stillness, um, seemingly without um, any individual cause or individual not listening or individual reason. And the only thing that makes sense to me is that we maybe weren't listening as a collective um, to what was needed. So we each have our individual journeys. We each have our individual struggles or individual fears or individual anxieties we're going through right now. And so I wanna look at where we're also all connected in this and what we can all learn from the, the common experience that we're all going through. Um, so uh, I'm gonna start with the slides and then wanna leave plenty of time for, uh, hopefully plenty of time for sharing and questions. Um, and yeah, just like, like Arya said, uh, I love just being holding space for hearts. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna share my slides. 
Okay, so we're looking at rise in resiliency. So I wanted to start with this idea of resiliency. What is resiliency? So I looked it up on uh, Miriam Webster and what it, resiliency says is it's the power or ability to return. Oh wait, am I? I am sharing my screen, right? You can see this? Yes, great. Um, the power or ability to return to the original form, position, etc., after being bent, compressed, or stretched. And you know, I I see that it's like the resiliency of humans to um, when we're faced with challenges, we find a way to rise in resiliency. We find a way to um, get back on the horse, as they say. And then I was really thinking, well, what about our original original form? The ability to return to that pure form that we came in has before the challenges, before the struggles, before the pain. When do what does that kind of resiliency look like? What does it take to actually return to that form that we were born into? So I wanted to explore that with everyone today. So this is where it gets a bit geeky, so hang in with me. Um, and the the purpose of going into this geeky realm is to give kind of a an actual like form to what's happening within us, what's in you. So you can actually understand when fears are coming up, when beliefs are coming up, when limiting thoughts are coming up, when anxiety is coming up, like what's happening? Where did it come from? Where does it live? So I wanna look at the journey of life a little bit. So we're born this like little ball of fire filled with excitement, filled with joy, filled with sadness, filled with aggression and anger and all the emotions, right? We're just full, un full unbridled expression in whichever way we want. And little by little. Um, so yeah, let's start there. So there's this, this diagram that I'm gonna explain really quickly of what this means. So this is um, the energetic anatomy of a human. So in a, starting in the 1800s with field theory, a couple of scientists discovered and started measuring our field. And some people call it our aura, the aura. And they started to measure, and these, the equipment to measure the field has gotten more and more sophisticated over the years. And there's three layers to the field. There's your etheric body, which supplies life force throughout your body to keep your organs running, to keep your heart pumping blood, to keep, basically keeps us moving. Um, some people call this life force prana in, uh, or chi, and that is in the air all around us. Then there's our emotional body, where emotions th live. And our emotional body is what we see right here, right? It's the spontaneous expression of emotion. It's the, the waves, the, the, there's no rules, there's no order. It, um, the emotion, our emotional body thrives on um, spontaneity and lack of routine and being able to free flow with whatever we're actually feeling. And then the mental body. If we were just an emotional body, we, this world would be pretty chaotic. So our mental body gives us some structure, some clarity, some protection, some orientation. We need to have some thoughts. We need to have some beliefs that kind of give us an orientation through life. And they live here. So when we're born, this is how our emotional, this is how our subtle bodies look, our etheric, our emotional, and our mental bodies. And we're pretty empty, pretty pure. Our expression is just moving out of us. Then, so I just have a little legend over here. So there's going to be some things popping up. So these little triangles are thoughts, big triangles are beliefs, little clouds are repressed emotions. So then we're a toddler. And by this time, we've had some experiences that as, as good as our parents, like the best parents in the world, at some point, they're gonna be exhausted. They're gonna be out of energy. They're gonna have no capacity to give. And our incessant, like immediate requirements as a baby are going to be um, rejected as our parents just can't give all the time as a baby needs in this modern society. So little by little, as we go up from being a baby to being a toddler, we start to have some thoughts, we start to think, and we start to build these little protection mechanisms, we start to have beliefs. We start to unconsciously, as a, as a baby, because we don't really have the conscious power yet to, to, re to learn what is okay and what isn't okay. When are mom and dad happy? When are mom and dad not happy? What is appropriate behavior? What is inappropriate behavior? 
we start to learn what emotions aren't safe, what emotions I can feel, what emotions I can't feel, what uh, emotions get me yelled at or make me feel uncomfortable or pain, and what emotions are acceptable. So some of the emotions that aren't acceptable, we start to repress them. So now our field yeah, starts to get a little bit, you know, it's still pretty pure. We're still pretty, pretty good at this point. Um, then as we move into teenage years and we move into school and we have kids and bullies and teachers and pressure and anxiety and rules and expectations, things start to get a little, a little intense. You know, we start to build up more beliefs. I'm not good enough. I'm not as good as my brothers. Why do you even bother? Why even try? Um, we repress more emotions as we maybe go through heartbreak and we don't want to go through that again. So we hold different emotions in. We learn what's appropriate and appropriate in relationships and not. And then we become an adult. And like more and more, if we don't start to deal with this, our field gets filled and filled and filled and filled and filled. So many humans are walking around like this. Most of us are filled with thoughts and beliefs about ourselves, about the world, emotions that we haven't allowed ourselves to feel. And this is what I believe unifies us across gender, across race, across sexual orientation and religious lines. There's only one thing that I've been able to determine that really, really unifies all people, and that is our conditioning. We've all been told what we should be in, the, in various societies, it might look a little bit different, but we've all been told what we should be, how we should act, what's okay and what's not. And we've all um, con contorted ourselves in some way in order to match that. So there's this gap. We all have in common a gap between who we really are and who over the years we've chosen to be in order to protect ourselves, do what's appropriate so we don't have to feel pain, et cetera, et cetera. So then we go on to create a life based on our beliefs. Some of these beliefs are conscious, some of them are unconscious. Like the beliefs we chose from zero to seven are more material than like they're really deep in. And there, might, there wasn't even words for them when we chose them. They were just behavior choices we made as a, as a baby and as a toddler. So some of the um, oldies but goodies, if you're, if you're new to personal development or new to this kind of talk, I'm not good enough is a pretty common thing that all humans have to some, most humans I'd say a lot, I shouldn't say all, um, have to some degree. I'm not good enough in some way. My worth is determined by my output. It's not safe to feel joy. It's not safe to express emotions. It's weak to cry. I don't have what it takes. And we create our realities that match those beliefs. And we, um, so I've got to move everyone's faces every time <laughs> and that keep us feeling safe. Um, and we control our environments. This is a big one, especially leading up to, we're, we're getting to where we are now. So we create realities to keep gathering evidence for whatever we believe. If it's I'm not good enough, we'll keep creating relationships or jobs or opportunities that convince us we're not good enough because those little triangles attract, uh, are vibrating at an energy that attract things to match them. Um, and we try to control our environments as much as possible. So we end up living in this bubble that is very far from spontaneous. It's very much um, rigidly, uh, if, if unconsciously, but rigidly kept together in a way that matches our beliefs and keeps us safe. And this is, and it keeps us in our little comfort zone of what we have learned is appropriate and what we've learned is um, appropriate to feel, appropriate to think. And we just keep moving forward. We keep going through the actions, going through the movements of life. And then suddenly stillness. So, ah, like, what do you mean I have to sit still? <laughs> what? Like, it's like, wait a second. Like, I was totally good. I had my Tuesday night tea. I had my Friday night girls night. Saturday, we went to the movies with the family. We, I worked my job. I felt really confident with my paycheck. Everything was like normal. I had this, I had it all figured out. And now it's like sitting, it's like day eight. It's like, what's going on? Are we ever going to get out of here? And there's like so much stillness. So a little bit of control has changed. What was in our control then? Our work. Maybe some, I know many still have some control over work and things are a little bit different now. 
uh, friends, going out where we wanted to go out, our social lives, how we could present ourselves socially, um, professionally, exercise, yoga, all these events we could do. Um, what's in our control now? Toilet paper. Oh wait, no, I'm sorry. It, it's not actually in our control either. It was for a little while and we all kind of like grabbed onto that. Like here's the one thing we can control is toilet paper and now, and now we can't. So what's, what's left? What can we actually control when the entire external world has shifted and changed? And everything, all the little controls we had are very little now. Well, the only thing we can do is control how we respond to the stillness, solitude, and the unknown. And how we choose to feel, choose to be in each moment. Easier said than done in many moments, especially if there's, um, you know, family members to worry about, people who may be ill, um, or income, you know, worried about the income. And the, the trick here is that we naturally thrive in stillness and the unknown. This is the spontaneous nature of human beings. And we've just forgotten because of everything we just talked about, because of all the, the conditioning that is part of this human journey in this modern 2020 uh, society that we grow up in. And this is, our, this is our nature. Our nature is to be tuned in, not by what our mind and our beliefs think is safe or think is right or think is okay, but what our inner, inner strength, our inner wisdom, our inner knowing knows. And even though we don't have as, anywhere near as much external control, we have the ability to tune in and slow down and be still and find a quietness inside that allows us to hear what is the best point of action right now. Rest, an online yoga class, mm, you know, going for a walk, Obviously, like I mentioned, harder when there's um, income fear or other fears, and it's still, it's navigating, okay, what is the, the best way I can be right now? And if I can quiet, thinking and trying to solve the problem with my mind isn't going to work. There's only so far that can take me. So finding the stillness, sudden inspiration, sudden wisdom that is always there and always available. So the one thing I really want to help everyone understand is we're not, we're not all these triangles. And this stillness and solitude, at least for me, for example, one of the things I realized by like day three or day four is that as many years as I've been doing this work, um, I still really had, I was still basing a lot of my value on um, I still was having, I still was building in as much as I had slowed down, I was still building in a lot of activity to number one, avoid certain emotions or avoid certain things that I didn't want to look at. And number two, to um, give me myself some value in some way to make myself, to trick myself into believing when I was scared or when I was trying to expand my business or expand myself in a new way, and I was feeling the unknown, these structures I had in place to do things. And I was really antsy and really, it took me a few days to get used to the self-quarantine. And I started noticing, again, in the stillness, there's the fear and the anxiety that comes in. And then in the, in the taking a breath and in the pausing and in the listening, there's the possibility to learn, to um, really look at, okay, why am I so anxious right now? It, once, the it, once it's not about basic needs anymore or anything like that, because that's a whole different topic. If all of that is met and there's still like fear and anxiety, what is this, what is this based on? And what beliefs do I have about myself? that I'm now are coming to the surface because I've been too busy to see them before. And we want to dis disidentify with them. So for me, I uh, was still based, like for example, one big belief I'm looking at is that um, by putting more energy into my business, I won't feel joy. It's impossible to have both. So the inner child within me is 
flipping out because, and especially during, during this time, I'm, I'm trying to support as many people as I can in as many ways as I can. And um, just like everyone kind of had their rug ripped out from under me. So I'm like trying to figure out new strategies and do new things and like wake up really early and, and reach out to people and call people and support people. And my inner child, it's like, no, 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 no. Like, like literally he like opens up the phone and is like, I'm watching. It's like, he wants to watch morning cartoons. So like the, for like a week, I would wake up and watch like two hours of YouTube. And I'm like, dude, like, I, I, I no, like I got, we've got things to do it. He was digging his heels in and I couldn't figure out why. So there's these patterns of behavior sometimes that get in our way that in times of stillness really show up. We can't hide from them anymore. Like if I had to get up to yoga or get up to keep my busy schedule going and the external like little story and control box I'd put into play, I would have got out of bed. But now it's just like, just me. So all of these like patterns and behaviors and things. So I was really upset with myself um, at first, did some coaching on myself and came back to the three A's, awareness, acceptance, and alignment. So as there's behaviors coming up, as there's like little parts of you that you're like realizing like, I don't really like this part of me or, and like, I'm feeling really like not good enough or not this, as these like parts are coming up in the stillness, the uncomfortableness where you find yourself wanting to distract yourself. Um, the first thing is awareness, not just like, this is a real deep opportunity to stick up, take a step back. And what I mean by disidentify is realize you're not your thoughts. You're not the world you created. You're not all of your activities. That is not your worth. That is not who you are. That is not what your worth is based on. And you can start to find the deeper awareness of what your habits and behaviors are telling you. It's parts of you that are scared, parts of you that went through a lot when they were a kid, parts of you that got told they weren't enough or didn't grow up in a safe environment at home to feel emotion. And then the key part is acceptance. Quite often we there's lots of parts of us we don't like. So we just try to resist them and ignore them and push forward and just like, oh man, I wish I wasn't like this. Because if we accepted that we were like it, well, then we would just never stop. But the truth is the acceptance of these parts of us that are maybe showing themselves in this sudden stillness is that by accepting them, we create the space to integrate them because they just want to be heard. They just want to be loved. They just want to be integrated. They want to not be left behind. So the little kid in me that used to get told, no, you can't watch wrestling. No, you can't do this. No. And, and like, and my no, my no wasn't being heard. And like what I wanted wasn't being heard. He's like insisting like, no, you are not going to become this person working again for hours and hours and hours and hours where I don't get to play. And I'm like, you know what, dude, you're right. Come on. Like, come help me play more so like my play can like feed my business so it's accepting not resisting that oh my god i watched two hours of youtube again no it's okay i'm getting the lesson yes let's watch a little bit i'm gonna watch it with you we're gonna love it and then we're gonna go bring this play to work so um a little system i came up with to help with some of these habits and behaviors um first a quote from abraham hicks procrastination is the wisdom to not try and force something you're not vibrationally ready for. There's not enough action in the world to compensate for energy that's not moving. So really powerful line here from Abraham. And procrastination is one of the things that we can really beat ourselves up on. And now that we have so much time and less excuses, it's maybe even more prevalent. But there's a reason we've been procrastinating. And so how do you get yourself vibrationally ready for something? And it's okay if that, those words don't really make sense to you. It's, it's get, basically getting prepa preparing to get your inner world in alignment with what you desire, how you desire to be, who you desire to be. Um, so instead of trying to force your way through, there's five steps that you can take for, for during this time for shifting unwanted and outdated behavior. So step one, is you're unaware that you have unwanted or outdated behavior. And what I mean by outdated is it's one of those triangles that we chose when we were like four, where like, okay, I've learned that when I cry, my mom, uh, my dad tells me I'm weak. 
or my mom tells me that I need to be strong for grandma or whatever it is. And um, you decide at that moment, like, okay, crying is weak. I'm not going to cry. And you hold in all of your tears. And that turns into anger. That turns into all of these avoidant um, things. So the first step is where everyone's at, no awareness. So without awareness of an unwanted behavior that's no longer serving you, because now you know, you can cry, you're probably not living with dad anymore, or, you know, grandma's far away, and like, it's safe to cry. So no awareness, no judgments. Then you state a desire. Like, I want to be someone who expresses my emotions freely and clearly. Then all of a sudden, you are aware, like, wow, I really don't let myself cry, and I haven't for a very long time. But you're not judging yourself yet. But then, then you're like, okay, like, and then you're like really it's building up it's building up it's building up and you're like man like what is it going to take then you start judging yourself like i'm really like why am i someone who can't or maybe it's not cry maybe it's express fully express myself say my truth because you've been hiding your truth for so long so you start to judge yourself and most people get stuck here and they try to skip to step five they're judging themselves. They're aware of a behavior they don't like about themselves, but they're just like, why am I like this? Why can't I stop? Like, oh, just stop already. And then step five is the opening. So they try to force their way through willpower. So if, we, if I'm judging myself, like, let me just like really be the drill sergeant for myself. And like, no, like, you're going to change. You're going to do this. Like, I'm going to force my way. And usually it just creates a loop. Maybe you change your behavior for a day or two, but you end up back at number three. So number four is awareness and acceptance. So being in the behavior, being with the behavior, realizing like, okay, there I go again, not telling my truth. There I go again, watching YouTube. There I go again, um, not uh, you know, being stuck, like especially in these times as we're all adjusting to the stillness being stuck, maybe laying in bed, afraid, and like not taking action, not doing anything to change or whatever the story is that you should be doing in order to, to feel valuable. Um, it's just accepting, accepting, holding yourself. Like, you know what? Yeah, I'm laying in bed a little bit longer today. And man, is it a comfy bed? Like, this is pretty great. And I'm like really digging this right now. Yes, I want to get up a little bit earlier tomorrow or Next time I talk to my partner on the phone or on FaceTime, I want to express myself a little bit more truthfully. And right now, I'm totally good where I'm at. And that acceptance, as counterintuitive as it might be, is what leads to aligned choice. Because you're coming into reality, you're matching your truth. You're not trying to fake it or force um, through willpower. And stillness is really the access way to the heart. So you don't have to like really dive too deep into this. If you are uh, um, familiar with the chakra system, this is just showing the, the chakras. And just because I always like to match um, science with, with magic or the, the Eastern, Eastern medicine way of things and the energetic study, um, you know, these energy centers have been measured as well by Western science. So um, when I talk about the chakras, I'm talking about energy centers, energy, like um, really condensed energy areas of our body. And what, going back to our first slide, where I was looking at the beliefs and the emotions, so what we have is the first chakra is beliefs about safety in the mental body, feelings about safety. And then in the front, we have bravery and beliefs about life. So if we just look at this really quick, we have our second chakra, which is like life force. It's about our expression, our aliveness. The third chakra is our this life identity, what our ego, all the things we identify with, our beliefs, our emotions. And then in the heart, the green is the heart. We have where we've held back love in the past because we're afraid of being hurt. And in the front, we have access to forgiveness, joy, calmness, truth, humility, and faith, faith and trust. So in the stillness, the more we can slow down, the more we can take deep breaths and really allow ourselves to get out of the mind and hear our truth, the more we're tapped into the heart. And when we're tapped into the heart, we're tapped into that deep wisdom that we came in with as a baby when our body, before our bodies had all those triangles and clouds. 
And in those moments, no matter what's going on, um, no matter what's going on outside of us, no matter what we can't control, we can find a truth, we can find a peace, and that's available to us in each moment. We can find a faith, we can find a calm, and our deepest truth, and we can go forward from there instead of trying to, from fear, fix something or change something. So where we used to place our worth in external achievement or try to stay busy enough that we didn't have to feel, we now have an opportunity to reconnect to our inherent worth under, under, that, under all the conditioning, it's under all the beliefs, it's under all the repressed emotions. We get to choose who we be in each moment. And that's really the practice that we get to do um, during this time is yes we're out of con things a lot more is out of our control there's a lot more unknown so we get to remember we get to align to that who do we want to be during this time because all of that the beliefs and emotions that were in your body that have been in your body that were aligned with the, the controlled environment you created most likely will be coming up to the surface so now it's our choice to hold on to them um, hold on to them for dear life like no this is like i need these still or to align to the unknown to let go to realize there's power in surrender power in trust power in not using our mind to need to force things and to control things to use this as a training ground as best we can given the circumstances to return to that inner truth that inner power that inner pureness so we get to choose trust or fear in each moment so I'm going to stop my share and open it up for um, questions, thoughts, confusions, um, any, anyone who just wants to share what they're going on, uh, what's going on in their world, um, whether it's a question or just to get it off your chest from your heart. What, how are we doing this, Arya, through just chat or people unmuting or... Can can I just can I can you guys hear me? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, can hear you, Ryan. Ryan. I just want to before you just jump into the first person. I want to just take a minute and say thank you. That was really beautiful. Uh, really eloquently spoken. That was awesome, man. I was so captivated mm. and so tuned in and so appreciative of the way you just kind of held that container for all of us. And I'm sure there's like other people who are giving you. Uh, you know, and thank yous right now as well. I don't actually have a question at this moment. I just wanted uh -huh. to take a pause before you just rolled into them and say, bravo, man, beautiful. Uh -huh. and thanks for having me on. Uh, thank you, Ryan. <laughs> I really appreciate yeah, that, sure. brother. Thank you. Sure, for real. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Yes, I was thinking the same thing, Ryan. Yeah, I was like, ah, oh, yay. <laughs> really, really um, grateful for that. Mm. And um, yeah, folks can um, unmute uh, if you have a question um, and or put it in the chat. Um, we'll take about 15, uh, well now like 13 minutes and then we'll have like a couple minutes to, to close. Any questions, any like things that are coming up for you in this time, like a personal story or a personal thing that maybe you're stuck with and could use some support on or just, just any, any questions you had about the geekiness or just anything you'd like to share? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, hey Bernadette. Bernadette. Hi. Hi. Yes, I have a lot of questions about the geekiness. Okay. No, I'm kidding about that part. <laughs> um, so uh, I think one of the hard, harder parts for me is that um, uh, because of the type of work I do, uh, I'm, I'm kind of at risk for, um, catching this virus. Hmm. And, uh, so like, I don't really have much choice as far as like, I can do all the things that they tell me to protect myself, but, um, the hunkering down and avoiding everybody, um, I can't do that completely because of the type of work I do. Hmm. And, uh, so I'm trying to be calm because I don't feel like panicking works. Um, and uh, 
when I'm trying to connect with my friends online, they seem like they're, they're hiding and panicking. Hmm. And my calmness seems to be annoying them instead of mm. helping them get calm because mm. they're kind of like wake up you need to panic with us <laughs> and it's not going to help if anything all i'll have whether whether the outcome is good or bad whether i get it or i'm safe um the panicking in between is just a lot of negative emotion that i don't want to go through mm. so i guess my my question is um, right now, what I'm doing is kind of distancing myself from them as far as conversations are concerned. And I really would like to be able to engage with them, but I don't know how to find that middle ground where I'm respecting their feelings, but also saying, I, I really don't want to engage in all this panic talk. Hmm. Yeah, great question. Thank you. And first of all, just like, thank you for continuing to to do your work um if i remember correctly you're a teacher right a preschool teacher and um i work for a head start so uh even though there have been adjustments we still need to help out the families yeah so thank you thank you for continuing to do that continuing to show up and and support these kids and support the family it's really grateful <clears throat> you know to I'm sure the families are and yeah just thank you so much and for staying calm for staying calm um when like admittedly like I totally understand the the potential panic that might be underneath the surface for you and just choosing calmness it's kind of exactly what we've been talking about is um we can't control necessarily as much as we'd like to now um but we can't control how we feel and just really appreciating the example you're setting there. And um, with the, um, yeah, so what I'm hearing with your friends is they're panicking. They're having um, some a cha more challenging emotional time with this. And um, they almost are like wanting you to panic. And it sounds like by, um, you interacting with them like you don't want to distance yourself from them and it also feels like if you continue to interact with them they may affect your emotional state or trigger some panic in you and so your yeah. question is okay and your question then is like how to continue interacting with them and not uh, risk that is that right yes is there yeah. any any way that i could do that yeah yeah, I think there is. Um, and yeah, so the first step is to, it, it kind of comes back to the um, awareness, acceptance, alignment. It's just mm -hmm. with people outside of you now. So it's becoming aware that um, these friends of yours are, are in a state of trying to control things. And right now, you know, I don't know what they have going on in their lives, you know, like what exactly other added elements might be adding to their stress. And whatever it is, um, the fear and panic is, is a way to, in these types of scenarios, is a way to control. It's a way that we can hold on to something. We can believe we're doing something. If we don't stop worrying about this, if we keep vigilant and we keep worrying about it, we keep thinking about all the possible scenarios, we'll be ready to catch whatever is gonna happen, right? So th the first step is um, just knowing that that's what it is, like deep awareness, deep compassion, deep, like, okay, that's what they're doing. And this is where they're at in this moment based on their circumstances. And just like putting up almost like an energetic boundary around it, just being clear, like with them that like, hi, I understand, I, I understand you're feeling this right now. And for me, it's really important that I maintain a calm. It's not that I don't understand what's going on or don't think it's important. Just for me, it's more effective to be calm. And then kind of just like letting them do what they're doing. Um, and the practice is as you feel that panic coming from them, just visualizing it, like coming in front of you and like rising up. Like there's almost like a, because your emotional body is actually naturally designed to take other people's emotions and transmute mm -hmm. it. So it's the holding on. If you hold on to their emotions, 
yeah. um, that's where it can get through to you. So how possible does that feel for you on like a scale of one to 10 to do? Is that clear, confusing? Um, I think, I think I get what you're saying. Um, okay. So it's, it's kind of like listening, um, listening with my logic side so that my emotional side can stay calm. And then maybe when I talk to them, explain that my calmness doesn't mean that I, um, I'm not taking this seriously. It's just that my calmness is the way I'm coping. Yeah, I think sharing where you are, stating how like your where what you are and what your needs are, and yeah, and meeting them with logic, yes, under or understanding them with logic, but also under like meeting them with their heart, with your heart, in the way that that's like not that you're above them. It's just that right now where you are, you having compassion that they're still trying to grip some semblance of control when you're a little mm-hmm. bit more surrendered, right? It's not yeah. that you're better than them or they're better than you or there's any it's just you're a little bit more surrendered right now um yes letting things be and they're not able to do that right now and that that both of those things can be and they can be together and then um and then just letting them yes stating your needs and then yes taking some space as you need it from them as well not feeling obligated to talk to them as much Uh if you really need a break as well yeah yeah, true. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you for that, Orion. And I just want to add, um, uh, Bernadette, that there's a, a perspective also that comes from the Heart Math Institute. I um, shared some skills last week in a group gathering that we had online. And um, there's a lot of uh, amazing science from this research institute that's been looking at the heart and how it works around uh, creating physical resiliency in the body. And the evidence is huge for um, when we can come into a place of what they call coherence, um, which is like a, it can look like a place of, you know, calm, peace, contentment, that sort of thing, that our, our body is um, producing DHEA, which is um, like supportive for uh, our, our lives versus cortisol, which is um, the stress hormone that's like kind of detracts from our vitality. And so know that by you kind of holding the center of calm amongst amidst everything that's going on for yourself, for the children and the families that you're interacting with, that that is truly a gift and um, really uh, like something that um, it, it is going to be supportive to the people that you are interacting with simply to be near you, um, near your physiology during this time when you're holding that calmness um, without ever having to talk to anyone. Um, your, your electromagnetic field of your heart is naturally communicating that to the people around you. So I want to really, really honor you and thank you for being able to hold that in the way that you are. Oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Thanks, Bernadette. And there's a question that came in over the chat. Oh, okay. Oh. Go ahead, Oren. No, no, I didn't. I didn't see that. Um, okay. Yeah, it was it was private. Okay. So this is um, from Leslie. Um, wondering what actions, actual actions, can we be doing right now? Many people are waiting until we go back to quote unquote normal, but I don't think that there is a quote unquote normal to go back to. Mm-hmm. What can we do to help people realize this and start changing things in our communities to make things better after we are released from our homes? How do we help people ethically evolve? Um, and so that is, uh, Uh, What I would say to that is that is one of the intentions behind these gatherings is building the skill sets within ourselves 
so that we can practice these tools so that we can know what are the right actions to take as we go uh, back into what the new normal will be. Um, so yeah, Ryan, any thoughts that you have on that? Yeah, it's a beautiful question. And you're right that, you know, this is a call, like I mentioned in the beginning, I really feel like the, the, the spiritual reason or the energetic reason this is happening is, you know, regardless of how the virus came to be or how it's passing around, whichever um, plot line or, or uh, quote unquote conspiracy theory or whatever you want to believe or whatever, from whatever source, it doesn't really matter. Like the reason I think this is happening on a spiritual level is because we weren't listening as a collective. We weren't listening. We've been pushing ourselves too hard as humans for too long, forcing our willpower in life to do, 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 regardless of the impact to our brothers and sisters, regardless of the impact to the, to the nature. And I'm not saying any individual on this call, I'm saying the broad collective of humanity. And there's a call to live from our hearts right now. We're being pulled and called for a new way, this new world you're talking about, Leslie. And like Arya said, um, it's kind of the, the, the best way to do that is the only way to do it really is to live it and to be it and to share as much as we, to be an example of what's possible, to be compassionate. And um, so when I think of the question, what actions can we take to help more people understand? Um, I'm not sure if that's how you worded it, but there's no way we can make anyone understand. That's kind of the, we can't force change. That's kind of the old paradigm we're leaving. That's the way things have been done. The only way forward, the new way forward is through love and acceptance. And by accepting um, more fully and watching and letting things emerge naturally from everyone's opinion being included, that this emergent world will come. And the only thing we can really control is our contribution to the collective consciousness, our, contrib our vibrationary co contribution to what is happening. And that's not a little thing. That's a huge thing. And those ripples are felt in big ways and do shift the people around you unconsciously. So I know that isn't exactly what you wanted. Uh, I don't think, maybe it is. Uh, I hope that supported or helped in some way. Mm, and I'm happy you. to talk yeah. more about that, Leslie, yeah, if you wish. Sorry, Arya. Mm -hmm. what? Beautiful and important questions. Yeah, <laughs> she said, really. thank you. It did help. <laughs> yeah, really good question. <laughs> I've, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you again. I want to take a moment just in, as we come into closing here. Um, Orion and I are both available for one on one support at um, reduced. Uh, rates slash free if you're needing any support um, definitely reach out um, Orion is there anything else that you want to say about that um, or other things that you're offering at this time yeah um, I'm done, I'm, I am offering a limited number of free support sessions I'm trying to do five per week um, free 60 minute sessions so if you just need anything it, um, you know uh, totally just 60 minutes for whatever you need. If it's just someone to listen to you, to what's going on, to offer some guidance or to, um, you know, meditate with you or anything, um, I'm here. Um, and then I do all of my services are 30% um, off right now. So human design reading, some other really geeky stuff that can help empower you with stability during this time, with understanding yourself better, with really knowing who you are, having some tools for that. So um, if you want to uh, reach out um, or I'll, I'll, I'll send an email out to everyone who joined uh, in the coming days with, with a few different details and links as well. Yeah, perfect. And if you want to drop the, your email and, and link into the chat so people have it handy right now who are seeing this live. And I want to take a moment to... Um, just uh, announce the upcoming events that we have happening um, uh, this Friday evening. There's going to be just a sharing circle, open sharing circle, um, that anyone is welcome to join. 
and um, I'll be sending information out about that to my email list so you'll you'll get um, the that that link if you want to register and come together in that way and then we have for um, a couple more weeks some really beautiful uh, events coming up following this one um, around uh, creativity and equity for resilient communities. We have a sacred sound bath coming up, um, ancestral healing for uh, pandemic panic, and also cultivating somatic awareness. So some really, really rich, really uh, helpful um, practitioners coming together for that. And then I want to also um, thank uh, the organizations that are helping to spread the word about this series um, here around Northern Michigan, um, kind of coming together as a local community here. Um, we have the Balanced Living Yoga Infusion Studio and uh, Willoway Spa and Yoga Bel Air, all of which are offering online um, yoga and fitness classes. And then Bare Earth Herbals, they have herbal consults, one-on-one -on -one consults around building immunity and being healthy in the body. Also an online store with some really beautiful, amazing um, organic and wild crafted herbal products. There is Inspired Living, which has an online store with um, beautiful home goods that uh, create joy, spark joy in the world. Um, Tidal Track is an organization that's supporting Native elders in Northern Michigan. So they're uh, accepting donations right now for um, cre creating uh, support for um, those elders in our community here. And Yanadi Clothing makes beautiful, um, ethical, natural fabric clothing. They have an online store as well. So um, it's really important, you know, during this time to support these small businesses, uh, brick and mortar businesses. And so if you're inspired, whether you're in, in this community or far away, um, to check out any of those, uh, any of those links that are included um, in the emails as well, maybe uh, purchase some nice tea or um, something that, uh, that nourishes you, um, know that a little goes a long way, that there's a lot we can do to uh, support each other right now and um, receive, uh, receive that nourishment for ourselves and, uh, and give it out to those around us as well. Um, please spread the word about this. If you have friends that maybe are feeling afraid, um, that you think that this could be supportive for, um, feel free to uh, share the links uh, as they come out. Again, you'll be getting my emails and connected to Orion now as well. So um, that, uh, that, that goes a long way as well to uh, create this community of, of resilient uh, folks. So thank you so much, everyone. Really grateful for this time with you. And um, I think I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Aria, if we don't know each other, I look forward to knowing you more in the future. <laughs> and um, have a great night, <laughs> wherever you are. So much love your way. Thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs>